could there have been nothing? Absolute nothingness. Yeah. Not? Can absolute nothingness make something? Because it's nothing. Yeah, it hey, I just said. I don't know. All, all this Big Bang stuff. No, this is not Big Bang stuff. This is about. Can something appear? This is nothing? about reasoning the reality with the tools that we have. So you have the tools yeah. of reason. From, my, from, my, from, a, from a very basic rational standpoint, can something appear from nothing? No. Right. So the universe obviously could not have come from absolute nothingness. Yeah. So that means the universe either always existed because it cannot come from nothingness or something that brought the universe into existence always existed. Because at one point you but cannot have absolute nothingness. But then you're, you're starting from a simple point. How can something just be? No, no, I'm just saying the possibilities are the possibilities are because nothing cannot make something and we are something two options either us we always existed so the question of coming to existence doesn't apply yeah because there was no nothing we were always there or something brought us into existence which was always there yes yeah, so that's where I have trouble I, I, I can't see how you can explore can you can ex no no it's not about tr having trouble these are the only rational choices because you're a rational human being you cannot have a choice whereby nothing can be the cause of something because nothing itself hasn't got anything it doesn't exist it has no energy to make something so our universe you and I exist so at one point in the past there cannot be absolute nothingness that means there has to be always something always something right. so either our universe was always there right. that's one possibility or something or someone that brought this universe into existence was always there so ultimately there has to be a cause which was always there what if either it's, it's the universe yeah, what itself is, what's his theory Let's, what's your theory what's your I don't, I don't have a theory you don't I don't need to be condescended there's no theory oh, no, no, no. What's your so if you're saying there's one there could be nothing which I accept no I'm saying so it cannot be nothing, nothing or it can be something. No, we are saying, rationally speaking, there cannot be nothing. That's what we agreed on. Yeah, but you're saying, you're, well, you're positing that there's, the thing that's always been there is obviously a god, your god, right? Is it? Uh, I think I'm, I have made a little bit clear. When we say it cannot be nothing at one point, yeah. then it means, by the logical extension, there was always something. Okay, so if you're always something is... There has to be always be something. explicit. What is that? No, there has to be always something. Right, so I'm going to say, whatever your always something is, that you won't tell me what it is, I'm assuming it's No, God. no, I'm not. Is it God? I'm not rejecting that I, I'm not going to tell you. What I'm saying is, in principle, what we can agree is that there has to be always something. Right. What that something is, is the matter of discussion. Right, so if you let me finish, the something could have been the single-celled organism that started all of this. That's one possibility. If that's one theory that you believe. Yeah. In, no, no. If you want to bring that as a possibility, that's one possibility. So that could be the thing that always existed. Yeah. So there could be a god that always existed, or there could have been a single-celled organism that always existed. Okay. And Which, it could be nothing. So let's say no, no, three. no. There cannot be nothing. We already agreed okay, there cannot be nothing. Okay. There's two things. There, there has to be a god or a single-celled organism. Right. A single and cell. Either of them could have brought all this together. To sure, sure. So now let's analyze each possibility in turn for their own merit and see which one is more rational. Right. Right. A single-cell organism. Do you think the single cell organism has the the knowledge to bring about this universe and the energy and the power? Of course not, but that's the that's what evolution is. It starts and then by a process of random mutations. Yeah. But that single cell, if it was first, whatever that single cell is, yeah. you'd know that single cell does not have the capability or the capacity to, to bring about the universe. To bring about planet Jupiter, for example. Right. So yeah, the single it cell it doesn't have an agenda. It doesn't have It's not about an agenda, it doesn't have the ability. Or the ability. Ability. Yeah. So that means that option doesn't seem to be very rational. So you're left up with other option, which is God, the Creator. Which is rational. Isn't there? Is that other option? Because I, you are. We are postulating. Both remember. Implausible. No, we are. We are postulating rational, rational alternatives. The alternatives is because it cannot be nothing. It has to be something. No, something could be a single cellular organism, or something could be the creator, originator of this universe. I agree, they're both irrational. They're both no, 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 you can't say both irrational. We have only examined one, which is the single cellular organism. And we said this is irrational. Let's examine the second alternative. The originator of the universe. Now, what are we giving? What are we saying the originator of the universe is? So, we are saying, as believers or theists, that the originator is the possessor of energy. Absolute entity that existed always having power and will. 
Now that I can say makes sense. Because if you don't have energy, you cannot bring about anything. You need energy to do actions. So yes, it makes sense that this originator of our universe has energy. I disagree. I'm, I have no agenda here, right? So I without disagree. energy... Like I said before, I'm, I'm objective, right? And so what you're saying to me, you're, you're, you're just saying it, and it has energy, and therefore... No, I'm is. not saying it has. That, I'm that saying can, honest, it mate, needs that, to. That can, that's, can, that's confusing. Okay. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying I'm, to understand. I'm it. saying, I'm let us lost. now... Let us now let us identify and describe as much as we can with our intellect, with our rationality, what the other alternative is. So this, this thing, the second alternative, the originator, this thing always existed. If it always existed, it existed with its own attributes and qualities, not given by anything else, because it exists always. You cannot give an attribute to something that exists always. It is not deficient in these attributes, whatever it has. These are, these are inherent attributes. If something exists always, without a beginning, you can't give it knowledge, you can't give it energy, you can't give it power, because whatever it has, it has it inherently, always. That's where, that's where my, I can't get Okay, okay, fine. Can't. Do you see energy in this universe? Do I see? Energy. Where? In our universe, in matter, in, 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 in the energies that we use. Yeah, it's, it's my understanding of energy is of being a There are energies. Yeah, there's energy there is energy everywhere. Right. So that energy obviously didn't come from nothing. So that energy has to be always present. Yeah. There you go. So that originator possesses energy that was always there. That's the rational conclusion. It's physics. It's not rational. Hang on. Physics. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, no, no, that's a theory. no, no. It is not only rational, but it is scientific and, and, and simple physics. This is what the lady is saying. I'm not going to get into a conversation about physics because I got 16% in physics at high school, right? <laughs> but I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Um, yeah, but look, you're a physicist or some sort of scientist? I'm a doctor. Right, a doctor. So I actually so, but not school. a physicist. No, no, no. Right, it's very different. Simple physics school, but, yeah. You know, you've got all these incredibly smart people doing things with the boson Higgs and trying to trying to create another a more big another big bang and all the rest of it. It's far over my head, right? But these guys, they spend their whole life thinking about this stuff. They believe that you can create energy from nothing, right? No, 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 they don't believe that. No, no, I'm saying that. The one of the one of the paradigms of our physics is this: you can't create energy. You can't destroy energy. Energy just transforms just from one to the other, one right? One you can't do that. This is one of the fa fundamentals of science. So, so the proven science for proven to survive, right. as, as far as right. science goes. So, since we know that si energy exists, the alternative number two, which is the originator of the universe, as an explanation for our universe, possesses energy or has energy which has no beginning, always there. It's only rational and reasonable to postulate. Because otherwise you'd say, you have to admit energy was created. No, but you could say energy was just there, and it's not... When you say just there, just always there, right? So we are saying, we are saying, because the first alternative of a single cellular organism didn't have that, the other alternative has the energy always there, meaning always there with no beginning. But that doesn't mean it's some sort of divine... No, no, I'm not saying it's divine. But at least, uh, you see, you're jumping the gun, jumping ahead. I'm, not, I'm genuinely confused. No, no, what you have so far understood in this, that this alternative, cause of our universe, possesses energy which was always there. This is what I'm saying. Right. And this so is what you're agreeing to. Okay, so we agree on that. Right. So then, your so next, now next, next few your steps next, that next, to next step is, is, next step yeah. is, does this energy possess consciousness or a will? Is something that we can look at the universe and also come to a rational conclusion. And what is that rational? Conclusion? Okay, let me give you an example. Um, okay, let me give you an example of a cosmic kitchen. A kitchen somewhere in our cosmos, fully equipped with a refrigerator, with a cooker, you know, cupboard full of sugars, teas teapots, cups, the sink with water and water supply, the fridge with milk, right? All of that. Now, if I were to ask you, having all of this in place, 
in this cosmic kitchen? Do you drink tree or coffee? Coffee. Coffee. Coffee then. Do you think a good cup of coffee with the amount of sugar? Do you use sugar? No sugar. No with sugar, no milk. No sugar, no milk. Yeah? But coffee alone with the right with the right proportion, right? With the right beans will be produced and ready for you in the cup if there was no willing agent to make it in that cosmic kitchen it's just out there and all the ingredients there would a coffee a cup of coffee uh, or, 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 or a mug of coffee would ever be made in a magical kitchen in, in a, a cosmic kitchen land, in a no, my perfect no, cup of coffee no no there? in a cosmic a kitchen where there's no magic <laughs> where is <laughs> sorry Cosmic means somewhere in our cosmos, somewhere in our universe, yeah. somewhere out there. In the infinite. The universe is not infinite anyway. Never mind. There's another discussion. <laughs> Whatever our universe is, somewhere along within you the cosmos. You love cos technicalities when it suits you, but you love semantics. No, 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 no. Just no, 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 no. simplify it and just, just to a simplify it. A just kitchen, a kitchen, a kitchen, right? so a kitchen somewhere kitchen. out there, right? Will a cup of coffee make itself Can in it, a kitchen? Well, he didn't say that. Can it make itself? Yeah, yes. That's what he means. Yes. So thank you for simplifying. A cup of coffee in any kitchen. Can it make itself? Thank you. You bamboozle people and then it doesn't make sense. No, right. no, no. So can, is there a magic cup of coffee that just sits there? Not will magic make, cup of coffee. Itself? I'm not asking okay, for magic. Sorry, let's, let's take magic out of it. Take right. magic out of it. Your kitchen at home, right. you've got the beans, you've got the hot water, you've got the whatever, the kettle. Yeah, yeah. Can the coffee just go ahead and make itself and put itself in a mug and be ready for you to drink? Or no. does someone need to do that? Right. So Why that's not? His, that's his. Because when you have all the energy and ingredients and everything right. there yeah. to process things why doesn't this process happen because you need a an agent with a will to make it happen this universe to come with this diversity and complexity and unity of the things that we see within our universe for it to happen and manifest you need an agent a willing agent who is conscious and who has a will to bring this about Creator the of the coffee, yes. The yeah, in your case, you're the, you, you, it's you, a, an agent with a consciousness yeah. and a will to bring this together to make it. So this universe is course that we're looking for. That course, what I am saying is, needs to be something that is conscious and has a will that brought about this universe. Otherwise, the universe will not proceed. It will just be there as it is. It will remain whatever it was, you know. But the thing is, things are, have changed. Creation has taken place, or the universe has come into existence with its complicity and harmony. We know that this will has been in action already. This is why the Quran describes he's the originator of the heaven and the earth. When he wills something, it happens. The Quran affirms a will of this originator and calls him the originator of the universe. I believe you take many, many, many leaps to go from will and intent to saying that that's a creator. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I think you, if you, so you're clearly very into this. You've thought this through a lot. I've stumbled through, listened to a few words, and said, hey, this is what I think. What you're saying, <clears throat> pardon me, when you talk about logic and you talk about things that there's a linear process goes from A to Z, you go through B, C, etc. And, and that makes sense. Now I, like I said to you before, I'm not here with any agenda. You could you could persuade me. Whoever else could persuade me. The other guy over there preaching about whoever. Whatever. I'm just sort of here. But, and I'm completely open-minded, you understand. Right? But what you're saying just doesn't make sense. What hasn't made sense so far? You seem to jump. You say, well, in the cosmic kitchen, you have the ingredients, the coffee can't make itself, and then you and then you jump forward many steps, sideways and backwards, or God knows where, and you say, well, you don't say it necessarily, but you imply it. No. Perhaps, not, perhaps I need to make it clear. It's, yeah, what it's I'm saying is, me. once we affirm there was eternal energy, which was in existence, which had no beginning, 
then how did the universe proceed from this energy is the question. Whether it happened through intent or it just happened as it is, nothing. I'm saying if you have all the ingredients, like all the energies in place, thermal energy, chemical energy, material energy, it doesn't come together to form these kind of things that I've given example of. Okay? You need a conscious agent to bring this together, to bring this about. If our universe did not have a conscious agent as a cause, the universe would not proceed as it is like now. This is the logical extension that I'm following from the example of, of, of a cosmic kitchen or an ordinary kitchen. It's my kitchen and your kitchen, right? Any kitchen. Because the coffee cannot make itself, demonstrating that these things requires an intent, a being or an agent rather, who intends things to happen. The universe, if it was always in existence in energy, to manifest in its current form would never happen unless there was an intent process going through with a conscious agent. That is what I'm saying. This is a logical argument. I'm not giving you a scientific evidence for it. This is just a reasoning with you, giving my rational understanding of how we can explain our universe. As a rational human being, you'll realize that this makes sense because if it wasn't the case with intent and consciousness, then it would be like your kitchen. It will just remain forever and forever. No coffee would ever make itself. The universe with this harmony and this precision and design, people often somehow have a shock when we talk about design, as if the universe is not designed. The universe shows design to very minute detail. The constants of our universe are like accurate to 20 second decimal places. This is how accurate we're talking about the precision of design. So when we are talking about the universe, we are saying it's reasonable to assert and conclude and rational to assert and conclude there was a designer, there was an agent with intention, will and energy that brought about this universe. You're going to say something. Sorry, I was just going to say... Oh, no, no, go ahead. No, no, fine. Oh, go ahead. No, that's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll hide you. <laughs> um, so I was just thinking, so basically, you need a creator to have a creation. All of this, the specificity of everything, cannot have come about randomly. It's basically what he's trying to say. There's human beings, there's animals, there's many types of animals. There's so many types of insects and birds and trees. And everything feeds differently, everything survives differently. Could that have all happened by random accident? Absolutely not. This is what we don't believe. We believe that there is a creator to have brought all of this together and made it happen. And made all of those little things that created these things happen. So there has to be something that's out there that would have done all of that. Is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I agree just come randomly. Uh, we we agree on a lot, but then we disagree on the, on the con conclusion. Okay. So, so what why why the, the, a happy accident or a random accident or a random mutation? Too many random whatever. accidents. There's one too many random accidents that brought all of this about. So you said when you came in, you wanted proof, you wanted to see something, you wanted oh, yeah, to feel yeah. it, you wanted to experience it. Yeah. You can feel this, you can experience yeah. this. This is all there and could not have come by a complete random accident. It's impossible. It's just, how could that happen? Yeah, but so that, okay, so we can, we, let's say we agree on that for the sake of discussion. Okay, sorry, yeah. That doesn't mean that, now I know you're going to go back to all this energy stuff. That doesn't, that, that doesn't mean that there's someone with energy and intent and so on and so forth that made it so. It just, that, there's, that's, we're only considering two potential causes, let's say. So there greater. could be 50, there could be 500,000, who knows? But ultimately, out of these millions and zillions of causes, there has to be a cause prior to which there is no cause. Because we agreed there cannot be nothing as an alternative. So there is always something. Either this something is a millions of intermediate steps, like one God creating, one creator creating another creator, which created another creator that created the universe, or ultimately there is one cause, which is the source of everything, okay? You can, you know, talk about billions in between, but ultimately you have to deal with the first cause. Yeah, but then everything. you can start, like, where did the first cause come from? No, the first cause, no, 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 the first cause doesn't come from any, the first cause has to be always there. This is what you concluded. Because nothingness, absolute nothingness is not an option, then something has to be existing always. And that something is your cause, which is the first cause, prior to which there is no other cause. This is the rational conclusion that you accepted earlier on, because there is no other alternatives. There has to be something always. That something is 
the cause of our universe. Whether this cause is a random accident, which cannot explain the complexity